this episode called The Big Wheel. And I wanted it called The Big Wheel because it's sort of a metaphor for the world, keep turning. It's all about this bizarre relationship between one of our serial killers and one of his victims' son. The man that killed my mom, he stood right next to me. Happy birthday, Stanley. King for the day, right, Vincent? Right. I, I really wanted to spend some time with the killer for this episode. And I wanted, we wanted to do a day in the life of the killer. So you start out seeing the day in the life of this killer and then you realize he's filmed it all with his glasses. So everything for this killer, Vincent, is about what you see. So I play Vincent Rawlings and he suffers from uh, terrible anxiety. He suffers from an anxiety disorder. Uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. He used to live a normal life and work a normal job and stuff and manage his OCD and manage his anxiety and it got, it's gotten to a point where he's had to quit his job and his, uh, his OCD has taken over his entire life. He can't walk on cracks and, and there's a multitude of things he has to do, like he, he has to close the door twice, he has to open it twice. So when he finds that one of his victim's children is blind, it, it, he really just it throws him and he has to find out everything he can about the kid. He becomes obsessed with this boy, and he doesn't know why, and his OCD kicks in, and it's an OCD obsession with the kid at first. And then we realise there's an even deeper connection with the killer. Stanley comes out and finds his mother dead, and Stanley's a blind boy, and he knows something's wrong, and he senses somebody else there, and what happens is Vincent sees this boy, and the reason he spares his life is because in that moment, Stanley is the manifestation of the, the, the last vestibule of innocence within, within Vincent. He joins a, uh, a mentor group so he can get closer to this kid who's now an orphan, and um, he becomes a part of this kid's life. And through the rest of the episode, we witness Vincent as he realizes this epiphany. Simon Mirren, the writer of this episode, he, he gave me the script to read and it was I, was I was really touched by the journey of this character. I like to have really strange twists and turns. It's quite a layered story. Four. Did Vincent talk to Stan about adventures that they could take, places they could visit? What are Stanley's favorite things to do? He, he, he just likes to make things, to build things. Vincent used to help him. The construction sets? Yeah. The FBI are now hot on, on Vincent's trail and Vincent manages to get Stanley out of the house through the window, um, even though Vincent's injured. Are you okay? And on the bleeding out, and, and gets Stanley to this amusement park and on the Ferris wheel. Is it like the one we built? Is it? Uh -huh. Vincent and Stanley have had this, ha had this plan that on Stanley's birthday, Vincent would take him on a Ferris wheel which, of course, will take us close to the stars and perhaps he can reach out and touch the stars because he's always dreaming of the stars. We've, uh, we're shooting the exchange between Vincent and Stanley. And this is the big wheel scene, the end of the show, the final moment when our BAU arrive, thinking the worst, that this killer's going to throw this child off the top of the big wheel. Vincent makes a breakthrough and is finally able to touch Stanley and hold his hand and tell him what he means to him. One of Vincent's final lines is, is he, he says to Stanley, you, you helped me see. It's a beautiful story. They rush in. He's up top! To find that the killer is in fact now deceased, Morgan runs in and picks up young Stanley and carries him off like a hero should. It's my job as an actor to elevate material off the page. And this material was already right up there, you know, so I kind of felt like I, I hope I can match it. And I think Vincent is going to be one of those serial killers we remember. And the big wheel keeps on turning.